The greatest distance runner of all time has done it again. Elliot Kipchoge broke the marathon world record once more on the 25th of September 2022 at the Berlin Marathon. He absolutely shattered his own previous world record, which was set at 2 hours, 1 minute and 39 seconds. Kipchoge dominated the field today and smiled as he crossed the finish line with his new world record of 2 hours, 1 minute and 9 seconds in his pocket. Running is a beautiful sport that showcases elite genetics, superior mentality and undoubtedly some of the world's greatest sportsmen. I'm obsessed with distance training and all the physiology that goes on behind the curtains that makes such an elite athlete. So in today's video I will be evaluating Elliot Kipchoge's training regimes to help us understand the superior physiological adaptations he has gone through and how we can apply those training techniques in our own training programs. This is a video all about running distance training and the science behind how beautifully complex the body can be. Welcome to my channel, my name is Stefan, I've got my degree in biokinetics and I'm obsessed with scientific deep dives into everything and anything health and fitness. Great runners all have one thing in common, they look identical. Tall, lean and sweaty. Those biomechanical and physiological markers alone make running athletes so effective in their sport. The less mass you carry with you, the longer you can keep going. And the faster you can start to sweat, the sooner your body can downregulate temperature. As I've mentioned earlier, the body is beautifully complex. And when it comes to distance training, there are some very specific physiological processes that you need to keep in mind if you don't want to completely crash during a run. Elliot Kipchoge's training program perfectly pushes his body to the point where advantageous adaptations occur. He runs an average of 100 miles per week which sure is impressive, but it's how he does it which gives him that competitive edge. You see, the ability to run at high speeds for prolonged periods of time basically comes down to one main component, byproducts. When you use your muscles, they need oxygen and nutrients, like carbs and fats. Those nutrients then get converted into energy by the mitochondria. It really is as simple as that. Most of us usually have enough energy available, be it stored fat as energy or blood glucose from something we recently ate. So energy usually isn't the hindering factor. Our bodies love stability. It does not like change. So if the balance gets disrupted, it will very quickly and effectively employ tactics to bring the balance back again. This is where byproducts come in. Things like lactate, for example. There is a point during running intensity where your muscle produces more lactate than it can shuttle away from the muscle. If the levels build up too high, the body sensors will pick it up and red flag the situation. Reason it does this is purely if your lactate levels get too high, the pH of the muscle environment changes. Which could lead to an acidic environment literally eating you from the inside out. So what the body does is it shuts down muscle action. It literally forces you to run slower and if it gets to this point, well, there's no coming back from it. Where Elliot Kipchoge becomes such a special athlete is exactly at this point. After undergoing many performance tests, it showed that his lactate threshold, yeah, that threshold at which your body produces more lactate than it can get rid of, is much higher than that of the normal person. Meaning he can run very fast before he gets to that point. This lactate threshold is also, by the way, one of the main reasons why most scientists believe that it's practically impossible to run a marathon in under two hours. The athletes would simply have to run at a too high intensity to achieve the sub two hour marathon mark. Physiologically, it's almost impossible. I say almost because everything is possible, right? Elliot has done it in the past. Now granted, it was with a little bit of help, but he knows it's there. He knows he can do it. So the important question is, which specific training adaptations did Elliot elicit with his training regime and how can we get the same? Firstly, when you run, run fast. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. You need to force the body to increase its ability to supply nutrients to working muscles at high intensities. That's right, your body will literally make more capillaries to supply more nutrients to the muscles when needed. Pretty neat, don't you think? Secondly, Elliot Kipchoge trains in the Kenyan Highlands. His training camp there is 2,500 meters above sea level, meaning the air is thin and oxygen isn't as plentiful as at sea level. Meaning his body was forced to adapt to pull more oxygen out of the air. Now imagine when he's at sea level, how much more oxygen he can actually take in. Pretty impressive. That's an advantage to have. One of the adaptations that occur with low oxygen training is an increase in red blood cell count. Red blood cells bind to the oxygen in the lungs and carries it to the muscle where it's needed. 
So if you want similar oxygen harvesting superpowers, then go for training sessions in the mountains or visit a hyperbaric training center. Those are pretty neat. Some science also shows that altitude training masks can simulate a low oxygen environment. Which is interesting, but we'll dig deeper into the science behind altitude training masks in another video. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you're interested in. Anyways, the last training adaptation and the most important adaptation purely comes with time. Training, training, training. The more you challenge the muscle, the better they'll become. Their ability to use nutrients and oxygen will improve. To do this, they'll increase in mitochondrial counts. And this also means that they'll produce less lactate at higher energy output levels. That basically is it. If you're a beginner runner, then these are all the things to look forward to. And if you're an experienced athlete, this might be an indication to have a look at your training program once more. You've heard of the saying, practice makes perfect. Well, that's wrong. It's actually perfect practice makes perfect. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. If your program isn't properly written, then you're most likely missing out on some major performance improvements. So ultimately, your program, just as Elliot's program, should increase capillary count, increase mitochondrial count, improve oxygen uptake, and increase red blood cell count. If it's not doing that, then you're not getting the most out of your session. But anyways, that's it for me for today. I'm super excited to see what Elliot's going to do in the 2024 Olympics. Maybe he'll even break that sub two hour marathon mark. Who knows, what do you think? I'll see you in the next video. I post Mondays, Wednesdays, and even Fridays now. All right, cheers.